ready for section 11.5. Here's the I can statement. I can compute the area of triangles, triangles and quadrilaterals, quadrilaterals. All right, so there's the I can statement, and we've got a little pre-quiz for a warm-up here. Now, I would imagine that you've run into to several of these things before. Hopefully, you know what a triangle and a quadri quadrilateral is. Um, so that's the first question here. What is a quadrilateral? Well, if you think about it, the key word there is that prefix right there, quad. Quad means four, so it is a four-sided polygon. Polygon, poly means uh, many, and gon means sides, so it's got four sides. So what we typically see are things, you know, something like that. Um, maybe we see something that looks a little bit more uniform and kind of straightened up and everything like that. Maybe we see something like this shape, that's a quadrilateral. Maybe we see something really weird that looks like this, but as long as it's got four sides, then that's a quadrilateral. Now the next question is, what is the formula for the area of a rectangle? So let's go ahead and draw a rectangle and let's point out some of those important parts of a rectangle. A rectangle has four right angles. So I'm going to put right angles in each one of these. That's an important part. And then the opposite sides are equal to each other. Okay, So this one is equal to that one and this one is equal to that one. We'll get into more special ones in, in, in a bit. But uh, if as long as these two are the same size um, and they're parallel to each other, these two are the same size and they're parallel to each other, um, and we've got those right angles there, then we've got a rectangle. Now, if all of the sides happen to be the same, then it, of course, would be a square, and a square is just a, a special type of rectangle. Okay, so let's talk about what it is. So if we were to name it, it is a quadrilateral, or describe what it is, it's a quadrilateral. Lateral. Um, let's see. So it's got four 90 degree angles. Four 90 degree angles. Um, and it's got two pairs. I'll put some commas in there. Two pairs of parallel. Now, rather than writing the word parallel, um, we could just do this. Parallel, we could use this. Okay, we could use two, two lines that are right next to each other. Two pairs of parallel sides. Okay. All right. Um, so what's the formula for the area? Well, you may remember it this way. You may have been taught that it's the length times the width, or you may have been taught that it is the base times the height. Now, I tend to favor this one right here, um, and the base would be this one right here. It would be the, 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 the one on the bottom, so to speak. And then the height is how tall it is. Now, because that's a 90 degrees, this side is how tall it is. So that's the base, that's the height. If you want to think of this as the length and that the width, that other one, the width, that would be totally fine. Okay, but we're going to usually talk in terms of base and height, um, and you'll see why in a few minutes. Um, what is the formula for the area of a parallelogram? Okay, a parallelogram. Now, if you don't know what this is, we want to say what it is. So a parallelogram is this. It is again a quadrilateral quadrilateral and what it has is two pairs of parallel and I'm going to use that little symbol we talked about before parallel sides two pairs of parallel sides so what we typically do is we do something like this we kind of draw a rectangle that's been kind of pushed over something like this okay um, so these two are parallel and these two are parallel. Left and right are parallel and uh, the top and bottom are parallel. And then the formula for this, for the area of that uh, figure, is base times height. Now you'll notice that it's exactly the same as what we had up above. Um, and this is the base. Now this time, this side right here is not the height because we've basically taken that side and kind of tilted it a little bit. So what we have to do is we've got to be careful and we have to say, well, the height is the distance from the top to the bottom. So that right there would be the height, okay? And in order to illustrate this just a little bit, um, this is called the principle of parallel slices, or this is uh, a technical name for it as Cavalieri's principle. And if you were to imagine, I mean, in class, a lot of times I'll get a stack of paper and, and push it around and things like that. But what I want you to take a look at is this right here is, I mean, think of those as pieces of paper. Maybe they're, they're uh, 
wood or something like that. They're stacked on top of each other and they make a rectangle and this is the base and then this is the height. Well if you were to take this and just kind of push it over a little bit, make it slanted, the height is still the same. The stack of that paper or wood is exactly the same. So the area of this rectangle is base times height and when we push it over it's still base times height. Um, and we've got the same type of picture going right here. And the cool thing is you can do that for triangles also. So we could take a triangle that looks like this and if we were to push it over so that it was maybe a little bit more of what we call a right triangle or something like that, the areas are still the same. So a lot relies on what is the length of the base and then how tall is the figure, what's the height so to speak. Okay, so let's come back here. We've got that taken care of and then what's the formula for the area of a triangle? So remember a triangle is just a three-sided polygon. polygon. So it looks something like this just draw a classic triangle right there. And then we need the formula for the area. Now most of you probably know the formula for the area is one half the base times the height. Um, that's the way we typically say it. Some of you may say that it's the base times the height divided by two. You'll notice that if we were to multiply straight across we end up with the same thing. So either way you want to remember it is fine. I would kind of encourage you to do this. I know fractions you may not be thrilled about them but that's that's really the best way to handle this one. And so what we do is we find the base and we need to know the height. And again the height is not this slanted height on either side. The height is how far it is from top to bottom. Now what would be interesting is if you know why um, it's one half the base times the height. So you'll notice that each one of these has base times height in it, but this is exactly half. Well here's why the area of a triangle is one half of the base times the height. So let's say I made a copy of this and I flipped it over and put it right there. So this is the base and then that would be the base and then the height would be right here. Well if you'll notice what we have here um, because of these angles and the way they work out and everything, this is a parallelogram. So we've got a big parallelogram between this red triangle and this blue triangle. Um, so the formula for the area of that parallelogram would be the base times the height. Um, but we only want one of the triangles. We don't want the whole thing. We only want half of it. So that's why the, the uh, formula for the area of a triangle is one half the base times the height. Okay, now this last one is a trapezoid. Um, and a trapezoid, if you're familiar with this, then that's awesome. Let me describe what a trapezoid is. Um, again, it's a quadrilateral. So I'll write quadrilateral. Okay, it's a quadrilateral with, and we can abbreviate with, with the W and then the, the uh, slash there, with exactly one pair of parallel sides. Now let me show you how we typically draw um, a trapezoid. We make it look something like that. Okay? Now the top and the bottom here would be the ones that are parallel. Sorry for my crappy drawing there. But those would be the ones that are parallel. And because they're both parallel, just like we did here, we're going to call this a base. We're also going to call this one up here a base, but we're going to put little subscripts on there. And, and that's just to tell this is the first base and that's the second base. That's the first parallel side and that's the second parallel side. And then again, we need to know how, how tall it is. So I'm going to draw a little dotted line. And that right there is H. Now the formula for this it's a little bit longer than, and I'm going to write it up here, it's a little bit longer than the other ones. So it's one half of B1 plus B2 times H. Now let me show you why this is the formula. So there's the formula for a trapezoid. Let me see if I can draw this and make this look really good. I'm going to make a copy of this just like I did for the triangle up here and I'm going to draw it and I'm going to flip it over. So I'm going to draw it like this. So this would be B1 and this would be B2 and then this right here is still the height. Okay. Now you'll notice what we have here is we've made another parallelogram just like we did up above. So this parallelogram, the, the formula for that area should be the base which would go from here to here. So all the way from here all the way to that other end right there. And then we'd multiply it by whatever the height was. Okay, so B1 plus B2 would be the base, so we'd add those together, multiply it by the height, and then the reason we have the one half there is because we don't want the entire parallelogram, we only want half of it, we only want the red half. So that's why the formula works out the way it does. Now, we're gonna, we've had a big discussion on this pre-quiz right here, now let's just go ahead and write, write these down. So for a parallelogram, 
including a rectangle. A rectangle is just a special type of parallelogram. And we could also say, well, a square is just a special type of rectangle. So on every single one of those, it's just base times height. So we need to make sure that we know that. For a triangle, it's 1 half the base times the height. Whoops, I'll just go ahead and write this. Base times the height. Um, and then for a trapezoid, it's 1 half. And then it's going to be B1 plus B2 for those two bases, those two sides that are parallel to each other, and then times whatever the height is. Now, these are things that you just, you just flat need to know. You need to know these for absolute sure, okay? Um, not things you want to forget because they'll come up so often. I do want to throw one more thing at you, um, and that's to think about why, why we measure these um, and, and keep track of the units in a particular way. Now, uh, we're going to address that in just a second, um, but let's uh, do a couple of problems and then we'll talk about it. You'll see what I'm talking about here in just a second. So this one says, find the area of each figure, write, down, write the formula, show the work, Circle your answers. Don't forget to use the correct units. Now, this is this is that question that I was talking about. What type of units are we going to put on the answer? And then we want to round to the nearest hundredth, so two decimal places if we need to. So take a look at this one right here. Um, even though this isn't isn't there, we could put we could think of that as the base, and this is the height. If you wanted to, you could do the base here and the height there. It doesn't really matter because on a rectangle, we're just going to do one. Uh, sorry, uh, the area equals the base. I'm going to call that two times three point one. We're going to multiply the two of those together, and we end up with six point two. Now you'll notice that I didn't write something down. It said write the formula. So it would be really good if you went through on each one of these and wrote down the formula just as a way to kind of make sure that you have it in your head. Now, I'm not going to make you do that on every single one on the assignment, but we are going to run into some problems or some formulas over the next couple of days where you you, you really need to get them memorized and writing them a couple times is, is a really good way to do that. So uh, we wrote the formula, we showed the work, we got our answer. So I'm going to circle this answer right here, but it says don't forget the correct units. Now the correct unit on this one is we've got yards, but we don't just write yards, we write yards squared. And let's talk about why that is. So let's say, for instance, I had a square that was one foot by one foot. If I've got a square that's one foot by one foot, I'm going to multiply the two of those together. So I have one times one, that would be one. And then feet times feet, the way, the way we write that down would be feet squared, or one square foot one square that's one foot on uh, each side. So we measure area in square units. Now the cool thing about this is we could change this just slightly and we could say, well what if I'm dealing with something like this? What if I'm dealing with um, something that's one foot by one foot, but I'm going to write that down in inches, 12 inches by 12 inches. Well when we multiply those two together we end up with 144 square inches, or we could do inches squared. Okay, now when we do that, what we're saying is each one of these tiny little guys right here, so if I were to draw 12 lines right here, okay, and I'm not going to be able to get them all, okay, what we're saying is there are 144 tiny little squares, and it's just uh, much easier to measure area and square units like that. Okay, let's go to this next one, and I want you to notice that this one has two asterisks by it, so we want to really pay attention to the details here. Now, um, We've got 91.2 inches here, and then we've got a height of 7 feet. Um, and what I want you to notice off to the side, it says the height must be blank to the line containing the base. We want to fill in that blank right there, but I want you to notice this. Over on this one right here, you'll notice that the height is perpendicular. Um, it meets at a right angle um, with, with that base right there, whether it's the top or bottom, doesn't matter. Okay, so over here, you'll notice that we extend this line out here. This is the height because it's how far it is from the very top of this figure down to the line containing that that base right there. Okay, so that's important. So we're going to write the line must, the height must be perpendicular. Perpendicular. Okay, perpendicular. Perpendicular to the line containing the base. And what that means again is it, is it meets at a right angle. Now that's one of the things, the fact that this height is outside this. But then there's another thing going on. You'll notice that this is 91.2 inches. 
and then this right here is in feet. Well, like we were mentioning before, this is yards times yards, so that would be yards squared, feet times feet, so that's feet squared, and this is inches times inches, so that it, that's inches squared. We can't mix units like this, so what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to figure out what this is right here. So we're going to put this in inches. I think it would be a lot easier to turn this into inches than it would be to turn that into feet. That's probably going to end up being a decimal or something like that. So um, 7 feet, 7 times 12 is 84, so that's 84 inches. So again, we're going to write down the formula. The formula is the base times the height. So that means the area is 91.2 times the height of 84. So 91.2 times height of 80, whoops, let's see, clear that off. 91.2 times 84, and we end up with 7,660.8. So this is 7,660.8, um, and that, remember, is in inches squared. So I'm going to go ahead and circle that. Um, we've got the right answer and we're good to go there. Now just out of curiosity, I'm going to change colors. It would be interesting if we did this in feet. So I'm going to divide this by 12. So if I do 91.2 divided by 12, whoops, divided by 12, we end up with 7.6. So 7.6. So the area here in feet would be 7.6 times 7. Let's do 7.6 times 7. 7.6 times 7. Oh, 7.6 times 7. Made a little mistake there. So it's 53.2. So 53.2, and that would be in square feet. Now here's what's interesting. This is how many square feet we have, and this is how many square inches we have. And they should represent the same area, and this is where this stuff up above is going to be really helpful. This is one square foot. Every square foot has 144 square inches. So as a, as a double check on this, let's take 53.2 and let's times it by 144. That should tell us how many square inches there are. If we've got this many square feet and every, every one of those square feet has this many uh, square inches in it, let's see what we end up with here. So we do 53.2 and we times that by 144. Well, look at that, same number there. Now, not all of your problems are going to be like that. Pay attention to the units and, and everything, and you should be in good shape. Um, but that, by far, is, is the most difficult, difficult one. So um, notice on this one right here, we've got the same units. It's a triangle. Formula is going to be 1 half the base times the height. So we're going to have 1 half. The base is 2. The height is 3.8. If you want to put kilometers on each one of those, that would be fine. But I do want you to notice this is not a calculator problem. Half of 2, notice that those cancel. So the answer on this one is 3.8. And then we just need to make sure that we get the units. Remember, this is 2 kilometers times 3.8 kilometers. So this is going to be kilometers squared. And it's literally that quick. We're all done with that one. OK, let's take a look at this one right here. We've got a trapezoid. So we're going to do area equals 1 half of, we do B1 plus B2 the first base plus the second base, and then we times it by the height. So it's a question of finding the right numbers here. You'll notice that this 4.9 meters is the slanted height. It's not the distance from top to bottom that meets at a right angle. So that's we're not going to be using that number at all. So we're going to do 1 half, 7.9 plus 2.3, and then we're going to multiply that by 4.6. Now, we may get some, some uh, ugliness as far as answers go, but let's hope we're okay. So the, the uh, answer here is going to be 1 half. Let's go ahead and add the two of those together. Um, if you add those together, I believe you get 10.1. Let's just double check and make sure. So we get 7.9 plus 2.3. We up oh, 10.2, 10.2, 10.2, and then we're going to multiply that by 4.6. So let's throw that in the calculator. So I'm going to put 1 half in as... 0.5 times 10.2 times 4.6. Now the danger in just throwing all that in there is if you type something in wrong, you're going to get the wrong answer. But let's see what we got here. 23.46. So 23.46. Um, that is the right answer. Notice all the units are in meters. So this is going to be meters squared. So we're all set there. Now that's the bulk of what you're going to need to do. Um, 
but uh, let's just run through and do a couple more really quickly. I've got a thought question for you, a few interesting ones here, um, especially this stuff down here. Um, I think you'll find this stuff interesting uh, and pretty thought provoking. So I'm going to run through here and do this about as quickly as I can. And notice that it says write the formula, show the work, circle your answer, and use the correct units. Um, some of these are literally on your assignments. So we'll notice this is a rectangle. Um, we're going to do base times height. So we're going to do 6 times 5.1. And if we multiply the two of those together, we end up with, uh, let's see, 6 times 5.1. Now, if it were just 6 times 5, that would be 30. That point 0.1 is going to give us an extra point 0.6. So you'll notice that we, we get 30.6. So 30.6 and then the units, meters squared. Okay, let's take a look at this one. Uh, parallelogram, area formula is base times height. There's the base. Notice there's that perpendicular right there. So this is going to be 8 times 5.7. Um, so you can go ahead and multiply those together. But again, what are the units going to be? Meters times meters, going to be meters squared. Okay, I'll leave it for you to figure out what that is uh, once, once they get multiplied together. Um, this is tilted on its side, but this is a triangle, and the reason we'd have to consider this to be the base and that to be the height is because this is one of the sides, This one of the sides has to be the base, um, and then this meets it perpendicularly. So the formula is going to be one half of the base times the height. So on our problem, we're going to do one half of nine times 9.4. We're going to throw that in the calculator. That's going to give us our decimal answer, and remember, this is going to be in meters squared. So you can go ahead and throw that in a calculator and get that. I am going to go ahead and finish this one off right here. This is a trapezoid. So again, the formula is 1 half B1 plus B2 times H. Again, writing that down and saying it at least in your mind will help you help you get that remembered. Um, and they only gave us the information we need. There's base 1, there's base 2. So I'll call that B1, that B2. Um, and then right there, that's the height. So we're going to have A equals 1 half B1 is 10.3, B2 is 2.9, and then the height is 3. My gosh, that looks familiar. Um, and then we multiply these together. Um, so this is going to be 1 half, uh, let's see, we get, uh, is that 13.2? Let's just double check and make sure. 10.3 plus 2.9. 13.2 times 3, and if we throw that all in the calculator, so again, I'm going to do 0.5 times 13 point, whoops, again, to see the importance of uh, typing things in there the right way, and then, whoops, then we're going to times that by, eventually I'll hit the times, 2 times 3, okay? Make sure I've got that all in there, there's our 1 half, multiply them all together, 19.8. So 19.8 is the answer, no rounding or anything like that, because we're definitely within the nearest hundredth, and centimeters. So this is going to be centimeters squared, because we're talking square units there. Okay, what is the formula for the area of a square? Well, if a square was like this, whatever you chose for the sides, so if you chose x for the sides, they're all x, so the formula would be x squared. Or what we typically do with something like that is we just say the sides are s. So the formula for the area of a square is side squared. Okay. Why is area measured in square units? Okay, we talked about that because everything, regardless of how weird the shape might be, what we're basically doing is we're chopping it up and we're seeing how many little squares we can fit in there. Okay. Now, other than my crappy drawing, each one of these would be a square, so we could literally count them. And then on these border ones, we just have to calculate, uh, kind of move them around, put them together until they made squares and figure out how many square units we had. Okay, so that's some rationale for that. Now let's take a look at these last couple. These are kind of interesting problems because these are a little bit backwards from what we've been doing. So it says a parallelogram has an area of 63 square meters. If the height is 4.5 meters, what is the base? So remember, this is a parallelogram, so we've got A equals B times H. It tells us what the area is. That right there is the area. The height is 4.5 meters, so that's the height. And what we don't know is we don't know the base. So we would know that this is 63. We would know the height is 4.5. And we don't know the base. So we're basically saying 63 equals 4.5 times the base. 
So we can divide both sides by 4.5, and that'll tell us what the base is. So I'm going to grab the calculator. Let's figure that out. I think this works out pretty nicely. 63 divided by 4.5, and we end up with 14. 14, make that look nice. 14, and then we want to make sure we've got, we've got it right. Square meters, meters. This has got to be in meters, OK? Triangle has an area of 120 square feet. Triangle has an area. Base, what's the height? Area equals 1 half the base times the height. So the area is 120. That should be equal to half of the base, half of 10, times the height. So this is 120 equals 5 times h. And then we'll just divide both sides by 5. And let's see, that is. 24 and we just have to get the units on there oh I need to I need to fix this I apologize for that you know what let's do let's do this in feet okay so we can keep that right I'll, I'll get that fixed for the um, for the handouts so that's gonna be feet so this has got to be feet right here okay all right rectangle has a length of 11 and an area of 40 square miles what's the width Area equals base times height, or length times width, if you want to think of it that way. So the area is 40, the length is 11, and we don't know the width. So we'll divide by 11. So the width is, let's do 40 divided by 11. And we'll round to the nearest hundredth. So we're going to round to that, that 3 is in the hundreds place. So we're either going to keep it a 3 or bump it up to a 4. So this is a 6. That's enough to bump it up. So we're going to do uh, 3.64. 3.64, and those are miles. And then here's the last one. We've got a trapezoid. It's got an area of 60, or sorry, 43 square inches. One of the base is 10. The height is 4. What's the other base? So remember our formula, 1 half b1 plus b2. I think this is going to be kind of interesting. Um, area is 43. 1 half. One of the bases is 10. We don't know the other one, so I'll call that I'll call that b2. And then the height is 4. Okay. Now, there are a couple good ways to go through and do this. If you wanted to distribute through, that would be fine, but I want you to notice something. Um, I can actually cancel the 2 with the 4. That would be a 2. Half of 4 is 2. Now let's distribute. 43, distributing through, that would be 20. 2b, well, sorry, 2b2, um, minus 20. So that's going to be 23 equals 2b2, divide by 2. And again, that 2 is just a subscript. It just lets us keep it straight. So that means base 2 is 23 over 2, which you could leave like that, or you could write that as 11.5 either way, and this is in inches. Okay. Now, I did go through a whole bunch of problems there, um, but that, that should really beat this topic to death. You should be pretty good at this. Um, and again, these formulas are really important, so I can't stress enough how important it is that you get these memorized um, and be able to recall them anytime you're asked.